Hi, my name is James Fung, and today I'll be talking about CameraX 1.1 features, including video and more. So what is CameraX? CameraX is a support library designed to make writing camera apps easy. CameraX provides a high-level API that lets developers focus on user interaction instead of worrying about camera internals. In CameraX, we're always finding and fixing compatibility issues under the hood, so each new version works robustly on more devices. So when should you use CameraX or Camera2? It depends if your focus is on development speed or custom camera control. Consider using CameraX if you need common use cases, like taking a photo or video. Consider using Camera2 for special control of the capture pipeline, such as driving multiple exposures or driving full manual capture. CameraX is tested across devices and designed to smooth out device variation. With Camera2, the app should manage device variation and test behavior across devices. CameraX is suitable for faster code development, letting you focus on UI and UX flows. Camera2 allows deeper development to create customized camera-based features. CameraX has frequent launch cycles, and you can start with minimal camera knowledge. Camera2 updates with Android releases, and you can apply deeper camera expertise. Let's take a moment to review CameraX. CameraX is built around key use case abstractions, such as previewing the live camera, retrieving a buffer for analysis, and capturing photos. With 1.1, video capture is also added. Let's take a look at a simple CameraX example. Here, we'll get a live preview on screen. First, we create a preview use case from CameraX. Next, we create a camera selector. The camera selector will search for a desired camera on the device. In this example, we create a camera selector that will search for the back-facing camera. Next, we get a handle to a preview view from CameraX's camera view package. This is an easy way to add a view containing the camera. Third, we bind the preview use case to a lifecycle. CameraX is lifecycle aware, meaning it will handle application lifecycle events like start, stop, pause, and resume without the need for you to write explicit code. Additionally, we give it the camera selector that will search for the back camera. Now, when the app starts, a live preview is displayed on screen. So what is the status of CameraX today? We launched the 1.0 stable release in May 2021. We're currently working on 1.1 alpha and expect to reach beta soon. As always, we're constantly adding new device compatibility fixes. These are available as patch versions 1.0.1 and 1.0.2 for the stable branch and in our 1.1 alpha releases. 1.1 is about adding features that were highly requested by you, our developers. Today, I'm going to talk about what's been added in 1.1. In particular, we'll focus on video capture, YAV to RGB conversion and rotation, and the extension's beta API. Finally, there will be a brief overview on some other new features to know about. Video capture is now being released as part of version 1.1. Let's take a peek into the video capture API. This is still in alpha and details may change, but the overall structure will likely remain the same. Video capture in 1.1 provides the basic functionality of recording to a file. Additionally, a quality setting API is provided that accounts for per device capabilities automatically. Finally, we'll take a look at the lifecycle management APIs. Let's take a look at setting up video capture. First, we create a recorder. We can apply quality setting for the video here using set quality selector. Next, we create the video capture use case using our newly created recorder. Then, like other CameraX use cases, we bind this to a lifecycle. When the app starts, the video capture will be ready. 
Next, we create a video record event listener. This allows the app to respond to video capture events such as start, finalize, pause, and resume. Additionally, a status event is continuously updated. It provides recording stats, including file size and duration. Next, we'll specify the output and start the recording. Video capture can output to a file, file descriptor, or media store. Here, we output to a media store. Next, we'll start the recording. First, we prepare the recording using our new media store output. Then we associate the event listener we created. We then choose to enable audio. The app should have already obtained audio permissions. Finally, we call start to start the recording. This gives us a handle to the active recording. With active recording, we can pause, resume, or stop the recording. This lets us operate on one recording at a time. That was a quick overview of the Video Capture API. It's available to try now in 1.1. Another highly requested feature has been YUV to RGB conversions. Let's take a look at it. Cameras typically produce data in a YUV 420 format, consisting of a luminance plane Y, chroma values U and V, and some padding bytes to align rows with efficient memory strides. However, this format can be difficult to work with when processing images. Camera X can now convert the output of image analysis to the more familiar RGBA format for easier processing. Here's an example. This code creates an image analysis use case, specifying a desired resolution and a back pressure strategy for the buffer of images. Additionally, the new set output image format method can now be called to request output in RGBA 8888 format. Image analysis will now output frames with RGBA 8888 data instead of YUV. YUV to RGB conversion in Camera X is based on libYUV. Additionally, in 1.1, the data itself can be rotated to a target resolution. Conversion typically takes about 5 to 10 milliseconds on mid-range devices on image sizes of 640 by 480 to 1080p. Of course, performance varies by device. Additionally, there is a small increase in APK size of about 50 kilobytes. YUV conversion also fixes a one pixel shift issue that is present on some devices. On those devices, the YUV output is barrel shifted by one pixel, resulting in the rightmost column of data appearing at the left edge of the image. YUV to RGB conversion fixes this on both YUV and RGB outputs on any devices where this is known to happen. Camera X will continue to apply this fix to more devices if necessary. Let's talk about extensions. Extensions were introduced in 1.0 Alpha. They're a powerful way to leverage extra on-device capabilities. The extensions API will reach beta in 1.1. Extensions provide image effects, including night and HDR modes, and an auto mode that decides between them, a bokeh mode for portrait effects, as shown on the right, and a face retouching mode. Let's take a look at using the Extensions API. First, we'll create a camera selector for selecting the default back camera. Next, we can use the Extensions Manager, Is Extension Available? to check if an extension would be supported by a selected camera. In this example, we query if bokeh is available on any back-facing camera. Next, we create an extensions camera selector. We provide our camera selector and specify the bokeh mode. The bokeh camera selector will now search for back-facing cameras that support bokeh. Then we can create an image capture use case a preview use case, and bind them both to the life cycle using our special bokeh camera selector. When the bokeh selector is used, the image capture will output images with the bokeh effect. The preview will also show the bokeh effect if the device supports it. 1.1 also adds exposure compensation APIs. 
Exposure compensation allows a user to adjust the metering of the device to better capture otherwise over or underexposed areas. In this example, we have a scene with bright content outside the window and dim content on the interior. The user can adjust exposure compensation to better capture the bright outdoors or the dim interior. This is an example of using exposure compensation. First, we create a variable to track the exposure index value. Then, we bind an image capture and preview to a lifecycle using some camera selector. Now, in some UI event, such as a button click, we can call set exposure compensation index on the camera control for the returned camera and give it our desired index setting. The exposure index is a device agnostic number that increments or decrements the exposure value by the smallest step allowable by the hardware. This allows it to work similarly across different devices. There's a few other details to mention. First, we check our setting will be in a valid range by getting the exposure compensation range from exposure state provided by camera info. This prevents a possible exception. Finally, if we'd like to obtain the EV value, say to display, we can get exposure compensation step and use it to perform a conversion from an index to EV. Smooth zoom is another feature in 1.1. Some devices have multiple cameras with wide to tele lenses. Camera X can detect devices which support the smooth zoom framework. On those devices, the zoom control of Camera X will automatically use the full range of cameras for more zoom. So if you already use the zoom controls, when you compile with 1.1, your app will now access the full range of cameras on those devices. We've just covered some of the new features in 1.1. There's additional features to be aware of. The Camera State API now provides more information about the camera state and allows apps to design better UI and UX flows around different camera events, such as when another app is using a camera or do not disturb is enabled. Image analysis can now provide sizes larger than 1080p. A logging API provides detailed logs for debugging and better bug reports. Coordinates can be correlated between use cases using the Coordinate Transformation API. If you locate some points of interest in an image analysis buffer, this lets you easily find those same coordinates in the image capture output or preview. A camera filter API lets you write a method to select a specific camera based on detailed criteria. The available cameras limiter allows for faster startup times if your app only needs a front or back camera. And camera controller info provides more detailed information about camera capabilities. CameraX continues its core focus on device compatibility, so apps work well across many devices. Some examples of fixes include stretched images, incorrect zoom settings, upside down images, issues when closing the camera, green output images, and more. Each camera X release adds fixes. Critical fixes are also placed in patch versions for stable. The latest is 1.0.2. If you'd like to see what's been fixed, the release notes list fixes in each release. Additionally, the issue tracker will list issues that have been fixed. So that was an overview of some new features in 1.1. Here's some resources to learn more about CameraX. An introduction and documentation are available on developer.android.com. A code lab shows how to get started with CameraX. Sample code using CameraX is available in the Camera Samples GitHub repository. Finally, the CameraX Developers Google group is a great place for active discussion and questions about CameraX. I hope you found this overview of 1.1 useful. We're really looking forward to seeing what you'll build with CameraX.